Good morning and welcome to Herb Oracle Podcast, botanical divination with herbs, essences, flowers, and trees with your host, Herbal Marie. Let's start the day off pulling some oracle cards and getting a few messages. We can shoot the shiitake in a spiritual way-ish. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'll post a pic of the cards at Herb Oracle. Thanks so much for joining me. Here we go. Today is the type of day that it's going to be hard to remember, like, my purpose. Or just think that anything even matters anymore. So the last... 24 hours for me have been so intense like a lot of mornings I'm like I don't know if I want to do a podcast this morning like definitely takes the cake um for those moments where like I don't even know if 45 minutes is going to be enough to pull me up off the floor not I'm not quite on the floor but I am aimlessly roaming around the house kind of just feeling lost and kind of stunned. So this podcast definitely has made, like, I don't even try to hide it. I put myself out there. I pour my heart out. I try to stay transparent, try to tell you how I'm feeling, share a lot of personal stuff. Um, So, I mean, why stop now, (laughs) you know? (laughs) But uh, yesterday... We did the law of cycles. Um, Everything exists within a larger pattern of cycles. All things happen in good time. Everything has a time to rise, a time to fall. Whatever rises falls, and whatever falls shall rise again. That is the principle of cycles. So that's what we did yesterday. And I had this kind of, I mean, I think I broke down and, yeah, I cried because, like, I was just feeling so much compassion and empathy For my husband, I just wanted, I don't know, like I had this moment that like I wanted to try to fix him and fix us and help us heal and help him heal and I don't know, like after being like kind of angry and frustrated and cold for two months, I had this this emotions that was like kind of hopeful and open and I don't know, it was really intense. It was really needed, right? So um, that's where I left you yesterday. And I really did. I was like, oh my God, like I can't believe I, I'm i actually considering like giving this another go and maybe there is a chance. Maybe this, I don't know. It was, it was crazy, right? Crazy emotional. Well, um, I basically ended my podcast and um, turned my phone on because it had not even been on, and um, yeah, I got a a text message from him that was not a reflection of that energy at all. It was more like his response to our emotional chat the night before was like, he really needs to get out of here, and he really can't handle it, and yeah, like he wants to leave, and um, Um, so the text message was like basically like a breakdown of of money and the bills and basically letting me know like it was going to be my job here real soon so if you can imagine how much I choked up and cried yesterday in my own podcast then you will understand that I literally had tears rolling out of my face until about 5.30, (laughs) Five thirty, six o'clock. <laughs> and, um, I mean, they would come and they would go, you know, but, um, yeah, anytime the emotions came up, I didn't even try to stop them. Like I just kept the faucet on, right? Like if there was, wa- if there was tears to be run out of my face, um, yeah, the faucet was on and I let them out because holding tears in, I've learned now at this point in my life, it really is like poison in your body. And when you cry, it is a physical release. It's an emotional release. Um, It really is the best thing you can do 
for yourself. Like, I mean, because when I think about the reasons why we don't want to cry, we don't want to look weak, we don't want to look silly, we don't want to look soft, or I don't know, we don't want our mascara to run. <laughs> I don't even wear mascara. But, um, like, the reasons for not crying are not beneficial. Do you know? Like, it's like ego worrying about what how people are gonna think about us or maybe what we'll think about ourselves but yeah the reasons to not cry are not beneficial the reasons to cry are completely um in the benefit of you and your emotional stance and your energy and it's just so much better to let things out i mean that that is processing you know, that really is processing. So I gave myself permission to really just cry. And I mean, I'm, I feel dried up today. And like last night, my eyes were actually burning. Like I had swam in the ocean and <laughs> kept my eyes open. Like my eyeballs were actually burning last night from crying so much. But it's just sad. It's just sad because... I don't know, like 13 years of, I mean, even when it, even when most of the time, like he drove me crazy and I hated on him and like, it's still like, that was still my life, you know? And, uh, it was always a good, uh, it was good comedy. When you live a weird, crazy, irritating life, you can always find good comedic material out of it. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, so yeah, I guess things are going to be definitely changing around here. And like, I really tried to like get him to be like, is this like really what you want? Because like, you don't have to leave. And um, like, because I th thought we kind of agreed to cohabitate like as roomies for a while for the kids and just like a really easy transition. And so I mean, it is what it is. And, and uh, I have to sort of like go with like, like yesterday, the law of cycles, like, I mean, every, all things happen in good time. Maybe everything happens for a reason. You know, that wasn't really yesterday, but that might be actually more today. Today we're doing law 16, the law of cyclic return. And I see it has something to do with reincarnation. So I don't know. We'll just stumble through it. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> I don't know. We'll see. I mean, today's Thursday, Friday. A lot a lot will happen, I'm sure, Saturday and Sunday to, like, either sure up, like, is this really what's going on? Because there's still this part of me that's like, well, maybe this isn't going to happen, or maybe he'll change his mind, or, like, he just, I don't know, he just is done. He's done with, like, things across the board, but... I mean, I really do want him to be happy and feel better and whether that's here or wherever, like I just wish the best for him. So yeah, that's where I'm at. So today I thought we would talk about this law and then I pulled out the herbal tarot deck. I know it's not Tuesday for Tuesday tarot, it'll be Thursday, Thursday tarot. <laughs> Shout out to my old speech impediment when I was a kid and I totally said all my S's like TH. Um, it'll be Thursday Thero. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so that's the update on my life. It sucks and um, it's exhausting and and uh, yeah, it's hard and it's raining today. So all those tears that I shed yesterday, I'm like not even surprised to see such a wet day today. Just gloomy and sad. So I'll probably need to write a, light a candle and listen to some of like the videos that uplift me and remind me read my course in miracles thing today and um yeah i mean even last night like i took my son out for his driving lesson or practice and and i said let's wait till it's dark so you can get some nighttime driving and i told him how sad how sad i was and he was like it's okay to be sad because <laughs> i guess he could like I was trying to talk myself out of being so sad or like, I don't know, but that was really sweet of him because usually he's, I don't know, pretty serious tech guy, but he, gave, you know, yeah, he just reminded me it's okay to be sad. 
So yeah, I might just have to roll with this for however long. But um, yeah, nobody likes change so much, especially when it's like affects everyone in the family in a negative way, kind of. But um, yeah, it's hard to just say. So what was yesterday? Whatever rises falls and whatever falls shall rise again. So yeah, I mean, that that's definitely my mood and my energy and apparently my life. And uh, it'll be okay. But anyways, I just thought I'd update you. So yeah, I mean, my energy is totally low, 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 low. And uh, we'll see if we can pick it up. But if not, it is what it is. And um, next week I could come in here high as a bat, <laughs> happy with life. And uh, yeah, we'll just see. But I hate it when, this, when I'm like this and because um, it's no fun. But this I've never really had... I mean, I've had relationships end before. I even, you know, my son is um, my husband's stepson. So that was a, a relationship that ended. But it's, you know what's weird? Here's what the weirdest part is. Like, a lot of times, like, relationships end and you're, like, mad. You're mad at them or frustrated with them. Or it just got to the point where you're like, get out! You know, and it ends like that. But um, I'm not mad. And I'm, like... Like, it's not, we're not mad at each other. So it's just a different kind of ending energy. There's no drama. We're not mad. It's just a, like this, the cycle of our relationship ended. Whew. So let me read the law of cyclic return, otherwise known as the wheel of incarnation. Once a soul qualifies for an incarnation to third dimension that's where we live the third dimension right now it there is an understanding that it must be completed so once our soul qualifies to come here there's this understanding that it must be completed reincarnation is that process by which the consciousness of the permanent atom manifests in another body through the human birthing process. This accounts for the fact of genius in the very young. All karma must be cleared or forgiven and certain aspects of soul growth accomplished before this entire episode of reincarnational, reincarnational growth is considered finished. So we come here, we incarnate, but if you don't complete whatever you came here to complete, you will reincarnate. The consciousness of the permanent atom, I guess that's the scientific way of describing your soul, the consciousness of the permanent atom manifests in another body. All karma must be cleared or forgiven and certain aspects of soul growth accomplished before this entire episode of reincarnational growth is considered finished. So yeah, you've heard me mention before that I don't want to come back. Um, I really hope this is the last time I'm in the human body. And um, so that's why like, I am hell-bent on not brushing anything under the rug. Like if there's something for me to learn from this, I'm fucking learning from it. You know, like I'm feeling it, I'm transmuting it, I'm working it, I'm going to cry about it, I'm going to think about it, I'm going to contemplate about it, I'm going to grow about it, I'm going to learn about it. Like, it doesn't matter if like my ego says, oh, you don't want your heart to hurt, let's close it down. No bullshit. Like, we are feeling this and um, I'm going to learn what I needed to learn from this relationship um, one, cause I don't want to re ever repeat this shit again. And two, I want to make sure that I'm doing the most and greatest amount of work that I can in this body so that I can complete my cycle. I mean, I've obviously been here before, <laughs> like, and that's why I don't want to reincarnate again. I don't want to forget again. I don't want the amnesia again. Um, like, I really do want to wrap shit up <laughs> so I can move on. Like, that's a big desire in me. So the law, 
what did it say? Of cyclic. Where did it go? The law. Oh, I'm on the page. The law of cyclic return. So that's what I'm hoping for. Of course, there's a part of me that's like, well, you might come back. So that is a underlying reason why I put so much um, social media information out there because I think, well, if I do come back, I hope I find myself. <laughs> I hope I find um, all the these these podcasts. I hope I find my herbal information so I, it can be returned to me quicker. I hope that I find my old, old um, videos um, on my old YouTube and um, so that I can do my shadow clearing work. I hope, you know what I mean? Like I've laid all these seeds, of course to help people, of course for se service to the all, of course, you know, to do my purpose here and my work, but also just in case I have to come back, I hope that, you know, I help my future self. So anyways, but really it is the whole point just to keep doing my work, finishing my work, and yeah, finishing this cycle. Now, just for the record, I love my life. I love being here. I love being Sadie Marie. I love my <laughs> my walking corpse, right? I love this body that you know, it's just a corpse, you guys that we enliven with our spirit, you know, that's what our bodies are. Um, but um, I do, I love, I love my life, I appreciate my life, I love my kids, I love Gaia, I love the earth, I love the plants, I mean, I love serving humanity, I love help uplifting people. Um, so when I say that I don't want to come back, like, don't ever think that it's, that I don't love life, I love life, I just don't think I I want to come back here <laughs> again. I don't know. Like, I'm really m kind of feeling ready to return to oneness. And, um, I mean, I, I've had enough separation experience from God or all that is or whatever you want to call it. But, um, so anyways, I love life. Um, but I know a lot of people don't, and um, that's one thing with my husband too. Like, he doesn't love life at all. He he just doesn't want to be here. Like, I'm glad I'm here. I want to be here now. I just don't want to come back, you know. But he doesn't even want to be here anymore, at all. And um, yeah, like I I just wish for him to do his work, his inner work, and learn his lessons. Because if he doesn't, he'll just come back. And I just don't, I mean, I just feel bad that he would choose that, you know. But yeah, like some people are just so resistant to, to learning their lessons. And um, he has a big, huge lesson of loving himself and feeling worthy. And, um, you know, part of the problem from his perspective is that I don't love him completely. But he'll never think anybody loves him completely if he doesn't start loving himself. So, I mean, yeah, like, learn your lessons. I mean it. Because, like, even this one, like, there's a part of me that could totally be like, all right, we're cold-hearted, we're moving on, like, whatevs, you know? But putting on that air doesn't help you go into your darkness where you need to feel your feelings and learn your lessons. And I have to think, like, what did I learn from all this? And how did I create this? And why was I a part of it? And, and what did this reflect? What did this relationship reflect within me that I need to know about? So, yeah, like, I got a lot, 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 a lot of thinking to do. Thinking and feeling <clears throat> and all that. So, let me create out the herbal tarot deck. Because, I mean, <sighs> I don't need to be negative for too long. But, um, thanks for listening in. Like, I totally was like, if no one listened, like, if for some reason, like, 
no one listened to the podcast yesterday or like the numbers dropped. I was sort of like, maybe I just won't do a podcast today because I don't want to bring anybody down with my drama. But there is a lot of light to be found in our dramatic life situations if we allow it, if we look for it. And um, yeah, if we're open to healing and feeling it. So let me, let's get some cards. Um, let me shuffle this deck first though, the herbal tarot deck. Everything's in it but lemon balm. I took the lemon balm card out. So we're not gonna be getting the moon, which is, is a bummer because that's a big law of cycles. And of course that was yesterday. Today's the law of cyclic return. Today's all about reincarnation. And, and learning our lessons and do we need to come back or not did you love fully in this life if you're not loving fully in this life good chance you're coming back just FYI <laughs> if you're not loving fully if you're still playing out these roles of separation duality and judgment your ass is coming back so if you don't want, if you're like me and you don't want to come back into a different body and forget who you are and start all over again, learning the same goddamn lessons, start doing your inner work now. Do your shadow work. Start loving. Open up your heart space. Forgive people. Quit judging people and don't ever separate and divide anymore. Like if you want to wrap it up this lifetime you gotta strive towards oneness you have to understand oneness and start to be oneness all right so there you go all right let's get some cards um herbal tarot deck you know where i'm at we're talking about reincarnation there's our first card so what can we he he hear i wanted to say heal what can we hear I was trying to say here, but my mouth wanted to say heal. What can we hear? Heal. <laughs> what the hell is going on? What do we need to hear so that we can heal? Yes? No? All right, I'm just going to do three cards, I guess. We'll see. And then if we need to clarify them, I will move you and rearrange you. I hope you're not, I'm not being too loud. You're right in my face. All right. Oh. We got six of cups reversed. We got the cute little kids behind the watermelon upside down. Um, this is a card about not taking things so seriously, being playful, but it's reversed. So, I mean, I guess it's just acknowledging that the energy is really heavy right now. And I feel like I'm being shown, oh, damn it, I'm being shown the theater stage. And it's like, you've forgotten this is all a play, right? Or just remember that at the end of all this, all the characters, the good guys, the bad guys, the guys that the only part they had was to be a tree. <laughs> we all come together, stand in a line, hold hands, and take a bow. Like at the end of our lives, all the characters, right, you're your nemesis, your <laughs> the people that you thought were against you are still characters in your production, your play. So it's kind of like, yeah, learn your lessons, but always remember that at the end of it, it's like, well done, everybody. Look what we learned. Thank it's like, instead of me being mad at somebody for being rude to me at the end of the life it's like oh my god thank you so much that was that really got under my skin so much and I can't believe how long it took me to let it go but thank you for giving me that catalyst for serious growth I mean literally start looking at your enemies like that because you're gonna start actually appreciating those mother truckers <laughs> all right I can't I have the little Okay, here we go. I have the little booklet, um, but I can look in the big book. But the Six of Cups, like just real quick. The Six of Cups reversed. 
failure to recognize the importance or power of another person or of a circumstance. Ooh, I didn't, I didn't think about that. Hmm, so I guess like, yeah, as relationships end in our life or we have our life experiences, make sure that we are looking at that person and that experience as a learning that circumstance as a learning experience like everything is powerful for our soul growth since we're talking about reincarnation and the law of cyclic return all right let's see what our second card is i'll i'll, I'll open up the big book and just kind of get like a more uplifting message for us to 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 top it off so that we can go through our thursday and um Oh, damn it. And I have that like birthday party tonight too. So it's like, I was so happier, so much happier last Thursday. I was so much younger yesterday. <laughs> oh, I know. Now the second card is Valerian and it's the nine of swords. And it's me. It's me just with my hands in my face sitting on the ground under the Valerian flower all the swords are above my head and I just feel so overwhelmed and my head hurts from crying. <sighs> the nine of swords is all about solitude, lamentation, lamenting, lamentation, lamenting, grief and sickness. Yeah, being so sad actually does make you feel sick to your stomach. Isn't that interesting? So yeah, we got the Nine of Swords, Valerian, just basically like whew, acknowledging how shitty I feel. <laughs> but I think it's like, stay there, right? Of course, if we were doing, that's my current, you know, if we're doing like a traditional three card spread, like that is my current energy. Nine of Swords. And yeah, like maybe I didn't, there's something that I didn't appreciate or learn or understand from this relationship. So now here at the end of it, I'm getting like uh, the big like review, self-test, practice test, and final exam all in one day. Like that's how it feels. All right, third card is ginger. Oh good, so now I'm sick to my stomach. Ginger comes in. <laughs> oh, herb nerds laugh with me. So yeah, like all this sadness is giving me a belly ache and our next card is ginger with eight of pentacles. So pentacles always feels like a more grounded energy to me and the very quick meaning for the eight of pentacles is a willingness to start working to achieve one's goals. A craftsman, artist, skill in business and other endeavors. So yeah, now I'm a dude. <laughs> now, now I'm the dude. I could be this guy who's just sort of leaning against the stalk of the ginger foliage, the ginger plant, and he's got his eight pentacles around him and he's just really ready to start working. It's like that moment when you're holding your cup of tea in the kitchen and you're just staring out the window or you're staring at the wall like you're just almost ready to get to work for the day like that kind of feeling like we're almost ready here so let me grab the book because i know there's more to these cards that they want to tell us and uh let's go back to the watermelon card the six of cups find the cups here Wands, swords, cups. Okay, cups are first up here. Six of cups, watermelon. Two children play at love. The boy beckoned in roses, start roses symbolizing desires of the heart, is making an offering of watermelon to the girl who is standing in attentive detachment. Wasn't that my marriage too? Like, I mean, 
this guy could not have given me more gifts, like literally. Um, I mean, he would give me the gift and then follow up with your spoiled brat comment. Do you know what I mean? So it was almost like, thank you, and then you take the emotional abuse. But he is a very generous, very generous, um, you know, and everything I wanted, ever wanted, I got. And uh, so that's interesting. And yeah, I probably was pretty detached. This card shows a need to touch in with childlike innocence of loving and add more playtime to one's life. At this stage of a relationship, there is no serious commitment. To achieve this, both partners will have to be willing to scale the lofty peaks of commitment for a deeper bond. Emotional immaturity and toying with another's feelings are to be watched for. These can only create a feeling of instability and eventual betrayal. So yeah, there was also a bit of that as well. And um, yeah, there was betrayal from the get-go in our relationship, you know. Um, he was seeing like two other lady girls, <laughs> um, two other females when he started seeing me. So it was kind of like, yeah, I won, I guess. But um, yeah, there was also always an energy of of mistrust, betrayal, like, yeah, I could be given everything, but my heart was still never open completely. And um, yeah, with, with every gift, it was like, is this because you just screwed up again? Kind of mentality, you know? So um, interesting card for me. So watermelon is a food that reminds us of summer days and taking time out to enjoy the fruits of the earth, right? I mean, eating a slice of watermelon, you can shove your face in there, get all messy, you feel like a kid. So yeah, this energy, we are getting this card reversed. So it's like, yeah, remember to get back to taking time to play and being a kid and uh, cool down any tempers or excessive heat of aggression and anger and frustration. So anyways, so yeah, watermelon seeds are used for all urinary um, problems, scanty urine, fluid retention, blood in the urine, bladder and kidney inflammations, urinary stones, um, you know, eat some watermelon seeds. You can simmer a tablespoon of the crushed seeds in boiling water for 15 or 20 minutes. You can make a decoction with crushed watermelon seeds for all your urinary troubles, if you have them. Hopefully not. Hopefully you're drinking enough water and being a balanced person and you don't have to heal. But should it come up, um, there you go. So the key words is innocence, not taking the emotions of another seriously, playing the child inside, friendship, sharing in a loving way. So yesterday, my tea bag, what I still have here, it says the essence of life is to communicate love. So let's just remember that we still can put love into everything, um, everything, anything. Um, make sure you're just sending love all the time. Make sure that's what you're putting out. The affirmation is lovingly I give and lovingly I receive the gifts of our friendship. So yeah, that's a big, big reminder for me to just really be like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Think back of all the thousands of reasons I can thank him and just feel love and gratitude. And yeah, at first that will make it seem like it makes me sad, er, um, a little bit, but um, it actually does, it is one more step up, you know, it's like actually getting you from sadness to appreciation. So there it is. We're upside down right now. Or we've been upside down. And Valerian is just coming in to recognize my grief with the Nine of Swords. The Nine of Swords. Yeah, a woman sits with her hands over her face 
her gray, she has a gray robe, it's, which indicates her mood. Yeah, really gray, really gray. She feels guilty and judges herself too harshly. She is not looking at what is good and admirable in herself, but instead she has created in her mind that she is not good enough or kind enough or just plain isn't enough. So yeah, that is how my husband feels all the time. And that is how I felt when he basically kept telling me that, that I don't love him. And I would be like, but I do love you. And he would be like, you don't love me completely. Or it's not that infatuated type of I love everything about you, love. Because I don't. But I still care about him and love him. And I've been with him for 13 years. I mean, I'm sorry I don't like wrestling or UFC fighting or collecting vinyl toys. It's true. I think vinyl is poison to the earth. So he, we are totally opposite in a lot of ways. And he doesn't expect me to like that stuff. Just like I don't expect him to go out into the garden and admire the calendula flower with me and eat borage flowers and get excited because we have St. John's wort now. Like he could literally give a flying fuck that there is St. John's wort out in our garden right now. Whereas me, it made me so happy that I cried, <laughs> you know? So I get that, like, but like I respected like us not liking everything, even though there was a huge part of me that was like, wouldn't it be nice to have something in common? And we do have one thing, we love our children. We adore them. We would do anything for them. And that's about it. <laughs> so, but yeah, when he would say that to me, it made me feel like I wasn't good at loving. I wasn't, I didn't, I failed him. I wasn't good enough. So even if mistakes have been made, acknowledge them and be grateful for the lessons. So yeah, like if I came up short with being supportive and loving, and I did, I did came up, I come up short in a lot of different ways. Like he's got a whole list of ways that I did not come through for him. And um, it says, okay, if mistakes have been made, acknowledge them and be grateful for the lessons. So I will acknowledge them and be grateful for the lessons. The ability to look inward and examine the self is a virtuous characteristic. It may be necessary to use this tool now and make some new resolutions. This should not be done in a judgmental way that throws one into deep lamentation, grief, and shame. So this is not the time for me to judge myself and think that um, I'm a piece of shit. Do you know what I mean? But just to look at myself, you know, just it is what it is. And the only thing, I, I can't go back and fix the past. I don't have the time machine. <laughs> they took the keys away from me. <laughs> I don't have the time machine. There's nothing I can do to go back. But what I can do is to make some new resolutions. Well, I will certainly try to be better and do better and love better and support better from this point on. Acknowledge the accomplishments in your life. Do not be afraid to see the good in your heart and your deeds. All too infrequently do we truly let go of self-judgments. For self-judgment is an indication of an unhealthy ego that is afraid to view the true self and its splendor. So yeah, we need to release judgments to, uh, that we have against other people and the ones that we place upon ourselves. Um, yeah, that is our ego that is afraid to view the true self and its splendor. So it keeps judging, judging, judging and uh, keeping you away from connecting, connecting, connecting with your true self. So the Nine of Swords, Valerian. Valerian will help to relieve self-judgment 
and the mental spasm in which one may indulge during trying times. And I'm wondering, I think I used up all my valerian tincture. I'll have to look, but yeah, I think I used it all up. When one is taking the herb or herbal essence, it is helpful to say an affirmation that will reinforce the sense of one's basic goodness and worth. It may be used for self-purification. When one is feel, feeling the guilties, it will help one to feel warmer toward the self. So yeah, valerian is, it, it reduces spasms, it's sedating for most people and calming. Um, but um, let me skip down here. Let's see what the affirmation is. So let we could just all connect into the spirit of Valerian right now and say, I fully acknowledge my goodness and worth, for I am a child of divine spirit. I fully acknowledge my goodness and worth, for I am a child of divine spirit. I fully acknowledge my goodness and worth, for I am a child of divine spirit. So that is interesting that like we got the children in the watermelon card reversed, you know, basically saying that we need to get back, you know, to our childlike essence. And this affirmation is also reminding us that we are all children of divine spirit. So we should know that we are good. We should know that we're worthy. I mean, the only reason we feel less than that is because we left Divine Spirit. We decided to play the game of separation. And um, <clears throat> yeah, that's why sometimes we just feel bad for no reason because we left oneness, <laughs> you know. So this is all about warming up to the self, moving from self-judgment to self-acceptance letting go of shame and regret, and just basically um, a need to acknowledge one's basic goodness. Okay, so that's what that is all about. And if you don't have valerian, you could maybe use mugwort. Um, mugwort is one of the herbal allies for that. So I didn't tell you what the six of cups the herbal allies for watermelon or just any type of melon seeds or maybe cucumber seeds. All right, then we're gonna wrap it up with the eight of pentacles. So shout out to my cards for being like so so good to, so good to me and ending ending um, this reading with a positive projection into the future. We've already kind of touched upon making new resolutions, new intentions with Valerian, right? There's nothing I can do about the past. All I can do is, you know, have this experience improve me as a human, as a soul incarnated, right? Just use it to my advantage in the law of cyclic return. Grow, 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 you know, understand, understand, understand. So let's get to the pentacles here. Ooh, eight of pentacles. <clears throat> so yeah, we're looking at this guy. He's got tools in his hand. He is looking carefully at his work. He learned his skill well, but knows that there is always more to learn and to perfect. Isn't that the truth? All right, the practice of good self-discipline assists him in making the right choices. Financially, he is aware of how to keep the books balanced, and physically, he has been learning how to keep himself in good health, for he knows that these are some of the resources he must rely on in order to keep going in life. So that's funny that, you know, I'm going to take over the books here, I guess. That would, would even say that. I mean, I guess I'm ready. <laughs> the need to establish strong foundations and roots so that an expansion can occur is imperative. So we need to ex establish strong foundations, get our energetic roots anchored in 
because a an expansion a very very big expansion is about ready to occur making the proper preparations and creating the time and place to create is part of the craftsman understanding what he must watch for is that he does not get caught up in idle pursuits or get so lost in the details that he forgets to look at the whole picture taking care of the body's needs is important for proper rest and nutrition is part of the healthy creative flow. So it's like, yeah, make sure you're staying balanced, make sure you're taking care of your body, taking care of your corpse, um, taking care of your mind. Don't get so caught up in the details that you forget to look at the bigger picture. We got all of that going on. Um, what else here? Um, so ginger, yeah, it was also coming in for my sadness, bellyache, um, warm, valerian is warming and, um, so is a ginger. So it's like warm up to yourself, warm up to your body. Um, let's get rid of those stomach cramps, <sighs> all that. So the key words is being prepared learning and creating with your skills, being orderly with your time and space, keeping books balanced, holy shit, maintaining a physical balance with resources. So, yo, yeah, that is for sure. I mean, that's good advice. And uh, the affirmation is, I work in a meditative and steady way in order to create the results that I desire. So yeah, I mean, there is, it's like don't get overwhelmed with everything that you've never had to take care of before. Like if you just keep it orderly, you'll get it done. If you just keep this house in order, it's not gonna become too much. If you keep your mind in order, you're gonna be so much more productive and uh, get things, the results but you just really need to focus in, help get yourself rebalanced from this emotional roller coaster ride, and uh, yeah, warm up to loving yourself and feeling that you're good enough and worthy and you didn't do anything wrong. It's just lessons to be learned and things to be improved upon and intentions to be made. Whew. So it almost makes me feel like I want one more card, but I'll decide I'm gonna lift up the deck and just peek what it is. It's turmeric reversed, which I think is all about coming together let me just real quick get a real quick message from turmeric so we can have four cards five of wands this is reversed which makes me think that the challenge might be um, to unify and feel connected let me look up here the five of wands so we got a cup, a sword, a pentacle, and a wand. We got one of each suit here now. So that is balanced. Um, let's see what the five of wands is real, real quick though. In the little book, it's reversed. Posturing and fooling around lack of commitment. So it's like eight of pentacles is like giving me all this good advice. But turmeric is like, yeah, but your biggest challenge is going to be your lack of commitment, right? Like, can you actually get over this in your mind enough to focus on these books in front of you and pull together an Herbal Marie podcast? Like, you have the resources, you had the dream, you had the focus, like, can you get it back? Is it worth it to you to get it back? Um, can you, can you, um stay committed so the five of wands like there's all there's one two three four five hands holding wands up each hand is a different color like there are five 
um, different races or, you know, it could, it could represent a lot of things, five different politicals, um, alliances, five different types of people. Like it's representing, um, actually is actually representing strife and prejudice, conflict, opposition, disagreement, and is saying that these types of conflicts and rivalries can drain our energies and divert us from more fruitful pursuits and endeavors. Even wars are not possible when our thoughts and efforts are fruitfully, fruitfully preoccupied with building strength from within. Therefore, to feel threatened is to betray an inner weakness that is better examined what, before we react. So, um, the Five of Wands also wants to say, let us not forget that when open conflict seems the only choice, it represents in some way a personal failure in dealing with our own shortcomings as well as an inability to communicate that which we feel to be vital to our survival and well-being. So if I feel the need to argue and be in conflict, um, that means I need to go inside and do my inner work and, and try to figure out what weakness and vulnerability inside of me is leading me to think that I have to defend and attack. So, Turmeric can come in when we're feeling a lack of strength, a lack of spiritual power. We can call on turmeric to help fortify and create inner strength. And if we have energy that is aggressive and argumentative, turmeric will help clear this energy and create the space for a new and healthier viewpoint to grow. So yeah, I need to definitely... Um, you know, I don't need to argue for my limitations. I don't need to justify why I did this or that or, you know, how I was put in a bad position for years upon years and he did this. And he, I don't need to even go there because it's going to take me away of my from my spiritual strength. So, yeah, it, this is definitely the need to look inward for the conflict that is manifested as an outward occurrence. So all this stuff that happens outside of me, it started from within me. And that's what I under, need to understand about creation. So turmeric says, anger is the measure of fear. Love is the measure of faith. Anger is the measure of fear. Love is the measure of faith. So less fear, more faith is what turmeric is suggesting that we move forward with. Whew. All right. I guess that's it. <laughs> So thanks so much for listening in. At the end of this podcast, I'm being shown a vision of myself sitting at a stop sign. Like I'm on my path, right? And I'm at the stop sign and I know where I've just been. And you know, I can sit at that stop sign and I can put my hands in my, I can put my hands over my face and just feel bad for the journey that I just was on. Or I can decide to move forward. But I can also, we've got these side streets going left and right. And do I want to take another ride around the block? Do I want to take a left and have another argument? Do I want to or just sit there for a minute? But basically, at some point, I'm need to cut, gonna need to put my foot on the gas and get refocused and drive forward so that I can complete my mission, so that I can fulfill my purpose, so that I can integrate my lessons so I can expand my soul. So thanks for just hanging out and um, we'll see what bring what tomorrow brings. Who even knows? Today we did the law of cyclic return and tomorrow we'll do the law or right to decree, which is divine invocation. So dang, I better get ready because that sounds huge. So thank you, watermelon. Thank you, Valerian. Thank you, Ginger. And thank you, turmeric. Um, what amazing herbal allies. 
to come in today just to give me the support that I need, the encouragement that always comes my way, and the direction and advice that's available to me should I choose to listen. And yeah, pretty sure I will. So, so much love to you. I'll see you again soon.